Well, welcome everyone. Uh, once again, my name is uh, Todd Herman. I'm the uh, Vice President of Development and Community Relations for the Bobby Dodd Institute. And uh, one of the driving forces behind the Igniting the Inclusive Workforce series, it's number three in the series. So we're really happy uh, that you're joining us this afternoon for about uh, 40 to uh, 45 minutes or so. And we are honored uh, by our, uh, our panel of experts, our speakers today. And before we want to get started, I just uh, wanted to get some housekeeping out of the way. One is to recognize our ongoing sponsors and supporters for the series. Uh, they include Disability In of Greater Atlanta, as well as the Georgia Tech Institute for Leadership and Social Impact, and the Excel program at Georgia Tech as well. Um, we're also very privileged to have uh, grant funding from Atlanta Foundation. So today's uh, session is going to focus on obtaining job coaching. And I'm joined today by Emily Myers, who is the region director for Briggs & Associates, as well as Ryan Carroll, who works for Children's Hospital of Atlanta and his mother, has also joined us, uh, who is Donna Carroll. So we welcome all of you. We also have an interpreter for today's session, who's David Turner. And then our project manager, who's on the call as well, is Katie Russo. So to, to start off, really want to kind of kind of set the, the uh, forum here um, by defining or um, really putting some parameters and some uh, definitions around what is job coaching. So I'm going to ask Emily to start out by sharing uh, with everyone what is meant by job coaching, what are its goals, and, and who needs job coaching. So with that, Emily, you start us right off. All right. Thank you, Todd. And good afternoon, everyone. Um, it is a pleasure to be a part of Ryan's story and to share a little bit more um, about um, what we do um, in support of Ryan. Job coaching is a service provided to individuals with, um, in terms of learning duties, um, navigating the workplace, establishing interpersonal relationships with coworkers, uh, managing any changes that might occur throughout the career. Uh, this includes identifying and requesting any accommodations that might be needed to ensure a successful match in employment. Uh, Briggs & Associates, my agency, is a provider of these services, and we support people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, as well as um, those with mental health diagnoses. And uh, a follow-up question, Emily, would be, so what is the difference between uh, customized employment and then support employment. There are two, uh, two uh, items or, or words, phrases that are shared quite a bit. And so for the audience, you know, what, what separates one from the other? Sure, sure, thank you. Well, customized employment um, is really, that. this is really the tale that we're telling today. Um, customized employment is an approach that involves identifying the strengths and the needs of an individual and uh, the business needs of an employer and facilitating a match in a very personalized manner. This involves negotiation. It involves carving, um, a term that, that the audience may uh, be familiar with, um, and developing a position that is tailored to the specific relationship between the business and their employee. Supported employment uh, includes services in a more general sense um, to assist individuals in obtaining and maintaining employment, but uh, supported employment is really um, in is provided in regards to more uh, standard and competitive positions. This would be for jobs that would be available without any adjustments or any accommodations, and that would be typically available to anyone seeking employment through more traditional methods. Got it. Thank you. Sure. And uh, I know that uh, you have, um, you know, a question for Ryan and to bring him into the fold as far as job coaching is concerned. Yes, uh, Ryan, good afternoon. Good afternoon. 
And our first question for you um, is uh, just kind of starting with the basics. Why did you obtain job coaching? Um, I started job coaching through a program I learned about through school called um, Project Search. And I had job coaching through that when I was getting ready to leave or after I left high school and that was for over a year. And um, when I got out of Project Search, I worked at Alpine Bakery for several years. And then I worked at Chili's for like a month. And then I finally got my job at Scottish Rite and I've been there for seven or eight years now. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. So uh, was the first job you had the right fit for you? I don't think, not exactly. Okay. Okay. Why was that? Because um, they had me doing a lot of stuff that was overwhelming to me and wasn't a good fit in my opinion. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, would you please describe your current job for us? I'm a lab runner for Aflac Blood and Cancer Centers at Children's Sky Shrike, and I use the power wheelchair at work to get the specimens delivered in a timely fashion, even though sometimes I speed through the hallways. <laughs> <laughs> How many trips would you say you make in a day's time as you speed through the hallways? Uh, too many to count. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I can support that comment. <laughs> do you feel just, you know, out of curiosity, Ryan, do you feel like this position is the right fit for you? Yes. And what's it going to afford you to do? Uh, it's going to help me move into a um, physically disabled home. The first one of its kind for physically disabled young adults called That's Champion's right. Place. <laughs> When are, when are you making the move? This weekend. <laughs> so that's a big celebration. Congratulations to you. Thank you. So Ryan, you shared that you feel like this current job is the right fit. Uh, Donna, what do you feel needed to happen for Ryan to find the right job? So when he <clears throat> was first employed at, at the bakery, um, you know, I think what we struggled with there was the work was mundane. Um, they had him doing very basic things, portioning pasta. And although it was a great first employment, he wasn't using and maximizing his full capabilities and skills. Ryan's a very social person. They kind of had him in the back of the house. He needs to be out with people. So with job coaching and working with Briggs, they took the time to really understand. You guys took the time to understand his abilities and his competencies. And so bringing the, I like to call it a three-legged stool, right? The employer, the job coaching, and Ryan as the employee together to set us up for success is really what's kept him gainfully employed for all these years. Um, and now he's doing much more fulfilling work. He's helping patients uh, in a great way and the staff there at the hospital. So um, it really is, it's been a great match for him. And he feels like his work is much more meaningful and he's purposeful in what he does. Yes. He truly is. Um, I did want to speak a little bit to uh, the fact that this position as um, I shared a little bit earlier, um, this, is, this was a, com a customized employment um, approach where we actually, uh, Briggs and Associates partnered with Children's Healthcare of Atlanta to identify a very specific need within the hospital. Um, the need at the time was that they needed someone who could take various specimens from the clinics back to the hospital. Prior to Ryan serving that very important role, they had nurses and phlebotomists and lab technicians running the items. And so for every minute they spent, uh, what did you say, Ryan, tearing through those hallways? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> was, a, was a minute that, they, that the staff were not with the patients, which was their purpose. And so 
Uh, they found they felt that they had the wrong staff delivering the specimens. The length of time it took was causing a delay in terms of patient care. And um, it was really impacting their overall services in, in such a negative way. And so they uh, identified this need and, and we worked closely with them on the carving and um, developing of the job description and then um, actually going out and identifying the best candidate who was with us here this afternoon. It was Ryan, he was the one. And so he was, um, you know, had, he was uh, best suited based on his strengths and his skills and his interests. Since that time, Ryan's role has been, um, has proven to be so beneficial to the hospital that even in light of COVID and in light of um, some, some changes that they have made as a part of restructuring in their system, um, they actually rallied and, um, and, and took it upon themselves as, as a mission to find the funding to keep Ryan's position in place. And um, that started with the clinics and it went all the way up to administration and human resources that the position was so important they needed to keep his position in place. So um, that's just another celebration and it really speaks to the value that Ryan brings to the hospital. And Emily, going off of your customized employment that Ryan ended up using, we actually had a question from the audience. Okay. Is there any set of criteria that's needed to use customized employment for a participant to do this? Well, um, customized employment, it, it's really, it's, it's the most effective approach for someone who is not an obvious match to a traditional competitive position. So um, just as an example, it might be for someone who wants to work in the hospital, but they might not have a medical, uh, medical training, you know, per se, they might, Ryan went through project search, which was medical training in his high school program, but, th but there are some people who don't, don't have that experience. And so customized employment is a way to pull out the parts of the job that might not be a fit or that would otherwise be a requirement for that position and to um, kind of in exchange to that, make the candidate an appropriate fit. Uh, it does start with a process called, I, well, ideally, it begins with a process called uh, discovery and profile. Discovery is um, 40 to 60 hours spent with a person, really learning that, about that person, who they are at work, outside of work. Um, it can be a very formal process or it can be a more informal process, which is, is what uh, Briggs and Associates did in the case of, of serving Ryan. Over time, we learn what Ryan like to do and what Ryan didn't like to do. And it was always fine to know what Ryan didn't like to do. This is Ryan's life. So we learned what fit and what didn't. Um, we learned what Ryan needs to be successful. We learned, we got to know Ryan's close support team and, and receive feedback from them on what would be best for Ryan. Um, and then we use that to match with the needs of the business. So that sort of process, I would say that um, building that relationship and digging deep with someone is really the key. And uh, the agency really needs to have the, the ability to do that. Um, and the individual, um, you know, in Ryan's case, would need to, um, to, to share preferences and skills and strengths. You know, that I think that would encourage anyone who's interested in customized employment to be very vocal about what works and what doesn't. Excellent. And you mentioned earlier carving, just for those online that don't know what that is, do you mind giving a quick um, summary? Sure. Um, carving is looking at a, an established position and pulling out pieces or adding pieces to, uh, to adapt the job to the individual, to the needs of the individual. So an example of this with Ryan, I think would be Ryan, um, when you first started work at CHOA, there were some parts of the job that were not an easy fit for you, more than likely. Um, I'm even thinking about the way the specimens you were logged in, for example, when you, when you collected them and reported back to the lab. So we just developed a, a, a particular form that Ryan would use that was a better tool for Ryan. 
um, that's carving. It's just, it's customizing little pieces of the job to make it a fit rather than those pieces being a barrier. Excellent, thank you. So Emily, I, I was wondering, we talked a little bit about uh, obviously um, things from an employee perspective, but what about from an, an employer side of things? You know, what should they consider or think about when it comes to uh, job coaching? What should they know about job coaching? Let's take it a, a step back. Sure, sure. So we just, we're very, um, we're very clear and, and, and very upfront about the fact that this, what we do is not business as usual. Um, we're not expecting it to be. And I think that sometimes from an employer standpoint, that's a little bit scary um, to be stepping outside of, um, you know, what's, what's normal, what's typical. Um, but we are really able to address the employer's needs by thinking outside of the box and doing things in a different way. Um, really in doing that, we've also found that employers are able to address needs that they might've had for years. And they've been trying it that same way. <laughs> you know, in Ryan's case, those nurses had been delivering those specimens for years before Ryan was there. Um, guarantee you, if you walked into the nursing unit and asked, what is the toughest part of your job? They're probably going to say it's when those specimens pile up and we need to run them to the lab to get our patients care. You know, that's not what they went to school to do and, it, and it's really not their, mo their main focus. So um, we just ask employers to, to have an open mind and to know that while it's not business as usual, it might be that needle in a haystack solution that they haven't found yet. Um, this, you know, what we do really includes making changes in various steps of the employment process, but we're here to level the playing field and to ensure a mutually beneficial relationship between the employee and the employer. The other thing I would say um, is that we really, we're all about independence. Right now, Ryan um, is completely autonomous in, in all parts of his job from a day on a day-to-day -day basis. And he knows that if he needs help with something, we're just a phone call away. And, and that's what we want. We, we, we really almost wanna make ourselves obsolete from the very beginning. We start fading, uh, we start building people up, uh, connecting them to natural supports on the job. And um, in our job, kind of our focus is to be sure that they can be as independent as Ryan is, knowing that they always have support available, whether it be Ryan has support or the employer, anytime a new need shall arise. You know, Emily, I really like the, the, the anecdote as to how the, um, how the employer uh, prepared for Ryan's arrival. And then I'm also, and, I, and I'm sure the audience is interested in how uh, Ryan prepared and how uh, the job coach prepared him uh, for that role. So, you know, whether, whether you want to take that first or, or uh, Ryan does, um, but I think that would be great to share. I'd like to suggest that Ryan give his, um, Ryan, can you, can you, kind of recall, say, the, the interview and maybe the, the days leading up to your job and then your first day on the job? Do you remember what that was like? Not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> You've been there so for... long ago. <laughs> That's right. Well, I can tell you what we typically do. Now, Ryan, did you come in and interview with the department before you started? Yes, I think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's it been a while, like, hasn't it? Yeah, it, it has. has. <laughs> well, I remember some of it, so maybe yeah. I can. I mean, um, so I know that uh, when we were making the transition, um, Emily, you had reached out and the team had reached out and talked about what the opportunity was at uh, Children's with AFLAC. And we presented it to Ryan to see if that was something he'd be interested in. And um, then you guys prepped him for the interview. He had to go in and go through an interview process um, just like anybody else would so mm -hmm. that they could get to know him and he could get to know the environment. Um, and then we've witnessed, just like you said, the job coach is there as much as they're needed, but not there to um, stifle 
-hmm. or to hover over Ryan. He is there to be as independent as he can be, but like you said, has access to resources to support him. And mm -hmm. over time, I mean, being there as many years as he's been there, he needs less and less of that support. But there is continuity. There's those check-in points, making sure things are going well. There's a good feedback loop. So if there is that coaching, which we all need, he's getting that so that he can get better um, and, and possibly even take on more. And um, it's, it's just been, like I said, a great partnership for us in helping him to be successful. Anything Ryan, else? go ahead. Yes, Ryan. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the part that Ryan, that you might not have seen because it happened before you came into the hospital for the first time, but um, in your case and in any case, when we're uh, doing customized employment with an employer is we present, you know, we've, we've heard, we heard the hospital, we heard what their needs were. Uh, we developed that position. And then when we came back and, and spoke about you, we said, this is the man for the job. He, <laughs> he and, and here's why. Here are the things you need to know about him. And we matched up each one of your strengths and your interests to every one of their needs. We said that you would be able to take care of the job, that you would be quick, you would be reliable, uh, you would be friendly, very friendly with the staff. You see probably hundreds of people a day thousands maybe by the time all is said and done um, going through that main lobby it's it's just unreal how many people you interact with and um, how many people in the hospital know you by name so we knew that you needed to have the personality the Ryan Carroll personality to be able to fill that role um, and now years later you are really the, you're the most popular guy in the hospital because you're taking care of the needs of the hospital and you're covering, you're covering some distance in a day's time. We knew that you had all of that to offer. And so when you came into the interview, while you might not have said that in the interview because you weren't as familiar with their needs, they knew that you were a match. They wanted to meet you for themselves. They agreed that you were a match. Um, what we did in Ryan's case, because Ryan doesn't just have one, he has a home base, but he goes out to the clinic. Um, so Ryan has really two separate sets of uh, coworkers and each one of those sets, whether it's in the main lab or the clinic that he serves, everyone needed to know who Ryan was, what his responsibilities were, what they were not, what they could not ask him to do <laughs> because that wasn't part of his job. Um, they needed to know what to do if Ryan is having a good day, what to do if Ryan's not having the best day, because that happens with everybody. And they needed to know that coming in. Um, over the years, Ryan has made friendships and people have learned more about him and how to support him as needed, which is how we've been able to fade back to giving more independence. So all of that communication is key to, to laying the groundwork to a successful career like the one that Ryan has had. That's great. Uh, thank you both. It's great. Uh, great, I guess, reminiscing and recall. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to jog the memory so much, Ryan. Uh, <laughs> I had a question come in, and I think it's in line with the next question I had in, in my mind, which was, um, you know, we talked about what job coaching is. And so I'd love to have um, you address, Emily, maybe what job coaching isn't, <laughs> maybe some sure. assumptions that people may have. Um, and the question that came in is, how long does the job coach work with an individual before they can work independently? So, you know, maybe, maybe tackle that question first and then go into what job coaching isn't. Um, so sure. take it away. So, um, yes, thank you for the questions. Um, the job coaching in terms of a new job is based completely on the person. So, you know, it's based on how quickly they are, they, they learn the tasks, um, how quickly they're, they're able to build up a comfort level with their new job. We, it's not an all or nothing arrangement. We fade little by little, like we might leave while the person's on break for the very first time and then come back at the end of the break, you know, or, 
come 30 minutes late or leave 30 minutes earlier, kind of be strategic about when we're there and not there. Um, and it's really done as we put pieces in place that take, um, put in pieces that take our place. So if, if we have, um, if the person, just as an example, needs a reminder to go on break at a certain time, will we get close with one of the coworkers and say, hey, if you notice that he didn't go on break at a certain time, can you just remind him? It's just a simple, um, simple change that allows the coworker to give the support rather than the career specialist, which is the title we use for a job coach. Our services never end. So once the person has learned their job and the person is independent, we check on people at least once a week if that's their comfort level. If someone would like more, we can arrange for that. If someone wants less, we can arrange for that. But you know, in Ryan's case, we've served Ryan, I'm gonna say for about 10 years or so is a, just an estimate. We're here for Ryan's career and, and Ryan's job has changed over time. His coworkers, his managers have all changed over time. There have been some, some additions and some subtractions. So we try to stay very consistent as a part of his team so that he can uh, have uh, the support that he needs when those adjustments are needed. Um, that was the other question. Um, how long, and I'm so sorry, I can't see the other question. Yeah, how long uh, does the job coach work with an individual um, before they can work independently? And then um, the costs that are involved, you know, who pays for job coaching was also a question that came in. Sure. Um, well, the costs for most of the people we serve are covered through um, fund, uh, in some cases it's through waiver fund, Medicaid wa waiver funding. In some cases, they are funds that are provided through either the Georgia Vocational Rehabilitation Agency or GVRA, or through the Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities. They are um, long-term funds and support for the career and they are of no cost to the individual or to the employer. All right. Um, going back to the, uh, the question about uh, the involvement of the job coach, I'm, I'm interested, uh, Ryan, if you wouldn't mind answering the question, maybe Donna, you can come in in terms of how the involvement ebbed and flowed with the different um, positions that you've had. And even when, you know, the position didn't seem like it was working out, you know, how did the job coach then uh, play a role uh, one way or another um, to help uh, things in terms of, you know, clarifying whether it was going to be a, the right fit for you long term? Do you want me to answer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, when we started to realize when he was at the bakery that the uh, pasta portioning was not working out. Um, Ryan started, I mean, this was one of those things where he started to express his dissatisfaction. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, at first, uh, we probably downplayed that a little bit because uh, we were worried, right? We, he had a job, we didn't want him to be displaced and not have a job. But that was where I think the job coach came into play and helped be that intermediary. They worked with the bakery to see if there were other tasks that he could be maybe given to make the work more meaningful. And, you know, it was determined that it probably wasn't a best fit for both parties at that time. And so they worked on our behalf to start to find something new for Ryan. And he did go to another restaurant as an, next step before he was actually placed at the at the hospital and that was because Ryan expressed a real desire to work in food service he loves to cook and if if Ryan could choose his job I'll speak for you he'd be a chef he'd be a master chef somewhere he'd own his own restaurant and that's what he loves to do but his his disability prevents that unfortunately but now he's in work that he can enjoy because we've taken the things that he likes about being potentially in a restaurant, the social aspects, the helping people, the serving people. And we've applied that to the work that he does at children's. And so 
Um, they were very heavily involved in that situation. Again, when we determined it wasn't a right fit, they worked to try to find re uh, resources or a uh, different uh, opportunities, and then they helped us seek new employment. Um, and, and that's really probably a great example of how we've seen them engage with us. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and that's the value of the long-term support. So while I'm talking about fading and independence, we also <clears throat> know that, you know, one day Ryan may find an opportunity that strikes his interest and, and he may have that chance to put on that chef's hat and, and find a way to be in that, in that capacity, who knows? And, and that's, that's, that's life. And that's what a career looks like. You know, people don't, you don't come out into the world knowing exactly what you want to do. No one does. So we, we understand that someone, you know, Ryan has loved his job for years and they love him but he may someday choose to make a change. And if he does, he knows that he has a team who really know him well and support him and can help him with that next step. If Ryan chooses to stay at CHOA through retirement, I know CHOA will be very happy about that. And I also know things will change at CHOA. There will be new managers, new coworkers, clinics move, all kinds of things change, COVID happens. You just never know. And because of that, Ryan um, and others have a team that help them weather any sort of um, any storm that comes their way so that they're just fine on the other side of it. That's great. So uh, we did have a question come in specifically uh, for uh, you, Emily, in terms of, you know, given that the, the, the work and involvement kind of fluctuates depending on where uh, somebody is in their in their job path and um, how well the position is working out and getting a feel for the responsibilities and the success. You know, what does the caseload look like from your end for a typical career specialist who's doing uh, or providing job coaching? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's an average <laughs> um, that you can provide, but that was of interest to the audience. Sure. We're very fortunate um, at Briggs. We, we do keep our caseloads at a, at a level that, are, that ensure quality. That's our, that's our focus, is that people can reach us when they do need to be able to reach us. Um, and so caseload is, you know, typically I'd say maybe 15 people per um, career specialist. In, in the community, maybe that, that would involve a, a percentage of people who are unemployed and a percentage of people who are employed like Brian and they're receiving support on the job. Um, and then, you know, again, things change. Someone who's employed may decide they want a different type of job. And so um, we really, we really you know, keep our focus on each person we serve. And, and if we start to see things the way you know, Donna described that maybe there are some red flags that come up or some concerns that the position might not be the right fit, um, we, we start looking for other things or we start to consider the person as a, as a candidate for other things that we develop um, just in general. So mm -hmm. just like everything else in this job, it varies, <laughs> but that's a very frustrating answer. So that just gives you some, a little bit of, of data that we could probably quantify. Mm -hmm. I will also say as a team, we, there are eight of us. And so and just we break our teams up geographically. And so the team that supports Ryan has that many members. If Ryan's primary career specialist was out for any reason, I would be an automatic backup. Um, we actually and we have the, the privilege that um, even a, a person or two, I think, that worked with Ryan in the past would be available to call upon as needed. So we just try to keep people in the loop and keep people in the team and always have a good backup just in case. Great. And uh, there, are, there are a couple of questions that have uh, additionally come in. I think one that I can uh, take and we can tag on a little bit, um, sure. which is 
So does, uh, you know, what organization or are there organizations out there that, that help potential employees and individuals get funds from organizations like uh, DBHDD and, and uh, GVRA and, uh, and help with the Medicaid waivers? And Bobby Dunn Institute is, is one of those yes. um, that we provide that benefits navigation and really help with um, what, what can be um, uh, um, you know, a process that uh, can look like years to some people. And we can shorten that down in terms of securing those Medicaid waivers um, and providing support while individuals wait. And then the GVRA and, and working with them and DBHDD, that's something that we do. But um, Emily, is that something that Briggs and Associates gets involved in as well? Yes, it is. If someone call if it, well actually if someone goes to our website we've we've determined that seems to be the best way um for for people just in terms of kind of record keeping if if you go to our website and i will make sure everyone has that um there's a link for request services there's also contact information for our office and if you call them um it, what they what they do to help you will be based on your geographic location and so they will give you specific names and numbers at DBHDD. They'll, they can provide contact information for your area with um, Georgia Vocational Rehabilitation Agency. And they can kind of walk you through the process. We have the sweetest, sweetest team that supports the office. And they are, they really become invested when they hear people's stories. <laughs> so they, even if we're not the right agency for, for whatever reason, they'll help you at least get connected to, to some other resources. So I would encourage um, anyone, I think maybe what I'll do here is just type our website out so people have it in writing, um, but request services. And then that would be the, the best way to start the process for Briggs. Mm -hmm. And uh, individuals are asking, okay, what does BDI do versus Briggs and Associates versus others in the community? And we haven't done a, 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 a deep dive as far as comparing and contrasting, but I, I will share on the, um, on the screen here that there are several organizations that do provide job coaching. And this may look uh, different from one organization to another in terms of the depth of that job coaching, um, how many individuals they have on their staff to Emily's point what their caseload is and how they will walk um, and support an individual through the process. Um, but um, be that as it may, if one organization um, doesn't provide the, the services we all get along. <laughs> so it's all about making the individual's uh, life path um, easier, smoother, and help them through the employment process, um, any type of empowerment services that are necessary. Um, and there are different differentiators between the, the different organizations. Um, it's very important that um, we are all working together as far as uh, referring out and all of these organizations you can uh, find through their websites. Um, and Emily probably has, uh, has a, a pretty good idea on most of these organizations and what they provide and uh, what they do not. But you know, there are some really good support systems in the market. Yeah, and I, I think that um, absolutely it's we're lucky to live in the area that we that we live in because there are so many providers and we hear from places outside of Metro Atlanta and, um, you know, that that don't have the choice. So uh, it, it's wonderful to have choice. I would recommend people call and see which agency best fits. Uh, what you're seeking. Um, just to share a little bit about Briggs, we, um, we're, you know, we provide supported employment as our sole service. And so um, for someone who is looking exclusively at employment in the community, um, we don't have a facility of any sort. We're based really in, in the community on job sites. 
Uh, we're, we're out networking with employers, really feet on the ground, um, looking at um, both competitive and customized employment opportunities. Um, our agency actually, we're very excited to say that we've just celebrated 30 years in business and um, we serve a, now, we started with one person. <laughs> um, our company was really founded to serve one specific person, which is a pretty cool story. Um, and now we serve a base of uh, about 900 individuals and, and over time um, have had the opportunity to serve over 3,000 people in 30 years. Um, we have the philosophy, we operate on the philosophy that anyone who has the desire has the ability to be successful in the workplace. We have a, a no refusal, no discharge policy. Um, if someone wants our services, if they meet the criteria um, that uh, based on either having an intellectual or developmental disability or a mental health diagnosis, we believe that person can work and we will find a, their place in the community. Um, the zero discharge uh, policy just simply means that we are here for the journey and we understand that the people we serve may not make a straight shot to the dream job. Uh, we're here for, for the ebbs and the flows um, in that person's life. And, uh, and again, everything that we do comes back to matching the right person to the right job. Um, CHOA, the CHOA story, I can't say enough about it. Um, healthcare is a, a huge industry in terms of partnering um, in, in, with community employers and CHOA specifically is one of the largest employers of, of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities in the, in the world. So um, what a great place to work and what a great story. Ryan, um, again, just couldn't be prouder and, and happier for you and, and all that you've accomplished. And uh, what a place to have a career. So thank you so much. Absolutely. <laughs> And we're so excited for uh, for your next step and moving into uh, the champions place too. That's wonderful. Thank you. We are Thank too. You. <laughs> you get to have that first pizza night in your in your new place. Yeah. With all your friends. <laughs> That's right. Great. Um, so Emily, one other uh, question that has uh, come in um, has to do with the pandemic and specifically what additional supports uh, job coaching has been necessary uh, during you know, the last eight months or so that you know, maybe wasn't uh, a regular function or wasn't as prevalent uh, back in, uh, in January? Great question. Um, so of the nine pe 900 people we serve, we, we were down to about two thirds of the people in our services were furloughed, it, either voluntary or employer um, choice or laid off. I mean, it, it really struck the people that we serve in a hard way, just like everybody else. So what we did during that time and what we continue to do is we maintain relationships with employers. Um, we helped with keeping contact for months and months while people were out of work. Uh, we, when it was time for people to come back to work, you know, I think we, we kept a, a politely persistent presence. I like that. Um, just to stay on the radar with the employers so that they didn't forget about all of the employees that they had. And, and, and we made sure that the people we serve were at the forefront of opportunities to get back to work if they could do so safely. Um, then we were present for that. So with each person, we would we would come onto the job site, we would assess for any safety risks or concerns. We would work on, we would wear masks, the individual would wear a mask. We would work on what six feet means. Um, six feet is, is, can be quite abstract. And so we would come up with tools to use. Um, using the hospital as an example, when you're pushing a, a cart on a nursing unit, by the time your arms are extended, the edge of the cart is about six feet. So we would give people visuals to use so that they could ensure safety. Um, mm -hmm. Then we would start fading back and kind of watch from a distance to be sure people were using the sanitizer and the hand hygiene and, and all of that. And we continue to do that. Um, the other thing we do is we are well aware of um, the fact that the essential worker positions carry inherent risks to, to anyone in those roles. And so we're really working side by side with people who might've worked at the front of a grocery store, in a restaurant, 
and help them find jobs that are less public facing. And so we're, and we are so focused right now on jobs that were created for the pandemic, putting together COVID tests, um, helping with contact tracing. There are um, new positions needed for, you know, sanitizing carts and, and, and giving out masks at the front door of businesses and things that didn't exist before, but now they're new opportunities, but safety is always at the forefront of that. Absolutely, thank you. And uh, we're right at time, uh, but I did want to mention that um, uh, the Bobby Dodd Institute also in regards to uh, how we've had to pivot during the pandemic, had to go to a digital uh, landscape in terms of uh, mock interviews and a lot of the, uh, the job coaching for a while was the, all the job coaching, but now we're recognizing that we really need a hybrid model where we can be in the field with individuals um, and then also uh, be able to interact through, you know, there's a web conferencing or, or even on the old fashioned telephone. So, you know, <laughs> We've all had to uh, transition and do things differently. So I, I can't thank you enough, uh, Emily and, and Ryan, Donna, for your time and your expertise and everything else. I did want to share with uh, the audience that um, Briggs & Associates, they're, they're, um, they are well-versed in the greater Atlanta market here to serve. So I do want, I want to sp speak for you a little bit about Emily and same thing with Bobby Dodd Institute and many of the organizations that were shared as additional job coaches in the market, a uh, certain area and, and even further out. So once again, there is no wrong door, um, but it's important to take advantage of uh, the services offered there for job coaching. Um, they're, they're valuable and can be completely um, difference makers in terms of the right fit and ongoing job performance, satisfaction, and success. So with that, I just wanted to lastly share that our next uh, session is going to be November 4th. Uh, we're going to have a, a great time talking about uh, post-secondary education options. And we have a, a wonderful group of speakers uh, for that session. So with that, I'll say thank you again. Thank you for everybody attending. We'll see you November 4th and uh, have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.